A five-star general. Throughout the entirety of American history, there have only been five generals with five stars. Getting five silver stars is an honor reserved for the best of the best, and is only given in times of war, when they need to be able to command forces belonging to another nation. So with all that said, who were the five five-star generals in American history? First, let's start with the basic military ranks. There are two main types of soldiers, enlisted soldiers and officers. To simplify things to the max, enlisted soldiers are the soldiers who do most of the fighting, and officers are the ones who manage the enlisted soldiers. Enlisted soldiers usually have specific knowledge about a certain thing, while officers are more generalized in their knowledge. Enlisted soldiers can also include non-commissioned officers, officers that manage other soldiers but are still enlisted. These include corporals and sergeants. Officers include lieutenants, colonels, and generals. For enlisted soldiers, the path of promotion is straightforward. You'll start out as a private, then a private first class, then a specialist, then a corporal, then a sergeant, then a staff sergeant, then sergeant first class, then a master sergeant, then a first sergeant, then a sergeant major, then a command sergeant major, and finally the sergeant major of the army. There's only one sergeant major of the army at a time, though. The ranks from corporal and upwards are non-commissioned officers. They're responsible for their soldiers. After enlisted soldiers, there are officers. If you're an officer, you'll start out as a second lieutenant, then a first lieutenant, then a captain, then a major, then a lieutenant colonel, then a colonel, then a brigadier general, major general, lieutenant general, and finally a general. After a general, which is four stars, there's the five-star general, the general of the army, or the air force, only awarded in times of war when the officer needs to be senior to an officer from another nation. Now, who are the five men who reach this rank? George Marshall, Douglas MacArthur, Dwight Eisenhower, Henry Arnold, and Omer Bradley. Let's start out with George Marshall. He was born in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, near Pittsburgh, and wanted to join the military from a very young age. He attended the Virginia Military Institute and was ranked first in his class for military discipline. Marshall served as a temporary colonel in World War I, but after the war, he was returned to the rank of captain. It was during the interwar period, the period between World War I and World War II, that he rose through the ranks to become a general. Interestingly enough, in 1939, he was only a brigadier general, or one star, as the deputy chief of staff. It was only when he was sworn in as Chief of Staff for the Army that he was promoted to General with four stars. Throughout World War II, this man oversaw America's expansion as a military from less than 200,000 people to over 8 million people. He was the first General to become a General of the Army, that is, getting a fifth star. Many Allied leaders saw him as responsible for massively expanding the American Armed Forces and FDR, Truman, and Secretary of War Stimson regarded him with the utmost respect. He was named Times Person of the Year in 1943 and 1947. In the Truman administration, he served as Secretary of State from 1947 to 1949, and it was then that he introduced his famous Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was basically America giving billions to European countries to help them rebuild after the war, and it's also, since, you know, post-World War II, to stop the spread of communism. The equivalent of $115 billion was sent to Europe, equivalent to $2020. Marshall was an immensely respected figure when he went to Queen Elizabeth's coronation, the entire audience stood up for him, and he was the only non-royal seated at Queen Elizabeth's table. Next up is Douglas MacArthur. He's probably the most controversial of the people here on this list. Controversies aside, however, he was probably the most brilliant military commander on this list. His father was a lieutenant general, and he knew he was going to be a soldier since he was a boy. He attended West Point, graduating first in his class and achieving the third highest score ever recorded. He fought in World War I, commanding the Rainbow Brigade, and getting promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. After the war, he became superintendent of the West Point Military Academy, became the Army's youngest major general, two stars, and became chief of staff of the Army in 1930, getting promoted to general. In 1932, however, World War I veterans who wanted the money they were promised congregated in Washington, D.C. and protested, demanding that they get their money immediately, since many were jobless due to the Great Depression. President Herbert Hoover ordered the clearing of the veterans, and MacArthur controversially cleared them with bayonets and tear gas, sparking fires that killed one. After FDR became president in 1933, MacArthur famously insulted FDR by saying that he hoped a dying American soldier would curse FDR, since his administration was proposing to cut the army's budget by over half due to the economic strain produced by the Great Depression. FDR yelled at MacArthur, MacArthur vomited on the steps of the White House, and after his service as chief of staff expired, went to the Philippines and became the field marshal of their army. At the time, the Philippines were part of the US. A field marshal is what some countries call a five-star general. In 1941, just before the U.S. entered World War II, MacArthur was recalled back to the U.S. Army as a Major General, and was named Commander of All American Forces in the Far East. In 1942, the Japanese occupied the Philippines, with MacArthur fleeing to Australia on the orders of FDR. 
MacArthur famously said, I shall return, and after two years of employing an island hopping strategy where allied forces would hop from island to island, he landed on Filipino soil, fulfilling his promise. He was promoted to a five-star general in December of 1944. After the war, he helped rebuild Japan and oversaw their military occupation following their defeat, and MacArthur was viewed like a hero there. After that, he served in the Korean War. In 1950, he masterminded the amphibious invasion of Incheon, widely considered to be his greatest success. In 1951, MacArthur was relieved of his command by President Truman, after MacArthur disobeyed Truman. He also wanted to drop nukes everywhere and start a war with China. He returned to the US, gave his famous Old Soldiers Never Die speech, and died in 1964. That's all for part 1. Part 2 will be coming out in two weeks. If you liked the video, then be sure to subscribe and like. Thank you for watching Explained. New videos every other Friday.